At the end of the first episode that we dedicated to learning about Elle Gray's warrior journey, something magical happened. Elle came to me from the other side. She had a request. She asked for me to reach out to my friend and trusted astrologer, Stevie Kalista. Elle asked for her natal birth chart to be read. She alluded to the idea that either revelations, validations, or answers may be revealed if we did as she asked. So we did just that. Karen and I are joined by Stevie and Vanessa to discuss what Stevie can see from their charts, or what we like to call the blueprint for our life's plan, which is written with the help of the stars and planets. And just to remind you, Elle was 12 years old when she was diagnosed with the most painful condition known to humans, complex regional pain syndrome, which feels like you're being burned alive 24 seven. With an understanding of what was going on within her body, but with no cure in sight and pain that wouldn't relent, Elle took her own life on July 22nd, 2018. Her mother, Vanessa, captures her story of facing unimaginable pain, loving unconditionally, the power of words, and life after death in the book Ravens and Rainbows. And many of you shared your signs from Elle. She is showing you that you are never alone and that there is life after death. And since we have Stevie here, she may have some nuggets for us to keep in mind as we go forward from the end of 2020 into 2021. We know Elle will be here as well, as she always is. I'm so glad we're all here. No, kindred spirits. You have no idea what a treat it is to be with you people like at this moment in time. So interesting. It really does seem like your relationship is continuing just as it was. It- I think that that's what your message is for so many people, Vanessa, is that you've taught people to look for those signs and to ask for them and know that they're always there. You can help change the way that people mourn. There is something about a grieving process because it's just even grieving that you're not physically seeing somebody. But I love what you said about talking about her in the present. That's a game changer. You know, when I lost my dad, it's it to me, it's a different level of tragedy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But I was, I do have that present relationship with him now. Mm-hmm. And I think that is hard for a lot of people to believe because we've been taught from a cultural and social perspective that once you're, you're gone, you're gone. Right. 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 I think we're all here just to show people that's not the case. That's what amazes me every day is that I have an active, current, evolving, organic relationship with her. And she has it with many other people. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. She's so, you know, she's so much more social now in some ways, honestly, right? Because she doesn't have to deal with all the crap that she had to deal with here that she's kind of like, you know, unencumbered and able to be so much more social. In many yes. Ways. And I think it's the, it's the nature of her force too, right? Like it's, it's like you two are like the perfect combination in that sense. And I just think it's just such a great lesson for all of us who just feel that disconnection with those who aren't around anymore, that this is the example. These are the examples that they can really implement in their own lives. I feel like you also give people permission who have lost somebody to live their lives. They don't want us sitting in our houses, crying all the time, not continuing on to live in this lifetime. They wouldn't, I I would say 99% wouldn't want that. You are showing people how you can have this relationship and live your life because you came here for L, her living and her dying is actually all part of your plan, I would believe, right? But there's even more to your plan, right? There's, you're a mother to jazz, you're a friend, you're a daughter, you're a professional, you're all these things, right? And that's one part of it. And so you have to keep on going on your path. And she's just right there with you. You just physically can't see her. I agree. So Stevie, let's dive in. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored after hearing all the story and reading and the book. I am like super honored to be a part of this. And when I was looking at all of the different charts, I pulled up like seven charts. Let me confirm her time and date and all that. So I have November 12th, 2002, Highland Park, Illinois, 2.52 a.m. Yeah. The first thing that I noticed is like how incredibly intuitive her chart is. The first word that came to my head was actually clairsentience, like just instantly feeling something and then knowing something. And Vanessa, you definitely have very similar aspects to, you guys have such similar charts in a lot of ways, which I found really fascinating too, because you both carry this like depth about you and understanding of the life, death, life cycle. Does that make sense? Like. Yeah. 
that you have to die and be reborn, even in, even in a body sometimes, like there's this transformation that you guys both, it's very powerful. When you were talking about her as a child, I was like, then looking at her chart and while watching, I thought it was cool to like watch a little bit, look at the chart and then go back. Cause I was like imagining things in my head about what I would think I would see, mm -hmm. which was such a cool thing to do. I don't usually do that. Feeling everybody's stuff like is really strong in her chart to, to maybe like a, a detriment perhaps where she's just like, it's just too much. So when you were talking about how she was very specific with people, I mean, her chart screams and I'm getting a lot of goosebumps. Like she can just feel all of it in her body in a, you know, um, it's just very, very powerful what she carries and like what she knows in that sixth sense that she has in her chart. It's really strong. And it also signifies really old soul. Does that make sense? So I'm crying because in previous things that we've recorded, it's stories I've told, but to, right? Like when I'm hearing something fresh. So yes, it makes sense. And that's L. She also has this aspect of like being really connected to her senses. So it also helps her like with it. It's like really deep and really like the sixth sense, but it's also very sensual in the way of like her environment, how things look, how things taste, how things smell, touch, like all of that. Was she very in touch with like that realm too? Yes. I mean, I would say every single one of her senses was on hyper alert. Yeah. Aside from her vision, which was like horrible, <laughs> you know, she couldn't see, she wore glasses since she was 18 months old. You know, everything with Elle is extreme. If you think about her illness, that doesn't get more sensitive than that. Yeah. And like, just thinking about what the illness does and this aspect that she carries is like, so it makes her very, very strong because this is the place of Taurus. I'm very strong. I'm very grounded, but also I feel everything and to, to like such an extreme, the unseen worlds and the world that she lives in too. So it's, and in fact, it's, it, it could be a really hard place for her because there's like this tension there too, like too much, too much, just too much. Yeah. Too well, and stimulation. Always, throughout her whole life, crowds, you know, loud noises, big flashing, like would always overstimulate her. So as a baby, like birthday parties, for, she hated them because it was just too much coming at her. And it's interesting when you talk about taste, like she had the most bland palate, right? Like she couldn't eat anything with a spice or a seasoning. You know, she ate like plain buttered noodles every day, you know, and, and then the extra sensory being very aware of the other side. I, I can't even imagine like a siren scaring her or like something that there's a safety issue here. Like she's always looking for like, wait, what does, what makes me feel safe? What makes me feel safe? As a little girl, I mean, there's no, like that, that search and thirst for safety was huge. The interesting part about both of your charts too, is that you both have this Uranus conjunct the moon, which is kind of rare. It also means a separation from the mother. There's a detachment from. It also makes your emotional body go up and down and up and down. Like you feel things really strongly, almost out of nowhere, like a roller coaster. Is that how she was too? Yeah. And she would be like in the middle of a conversation. And then all of a sudden she'd be like, okay, I'm done done finished bye-bye 100% like you guys both have that thing that's it's almost like an electrical emotional body because Uranus is like the lightning bolt that's always like kind of shaking us for truth and for liberation and for freedom and detachment so part mm -hmm. of her charts like I need to feel safe wait what makes, makes me feel safe and then there's other part that's like screw everybody I need to yes. be myself I need to be I need to be independent and like you know like blow it all up <laughs> <laughs> that's that is L in one sentence right there. You just I mean, it. even from what I know, that that's, that's her in one that sentence. Is, that's that her. Is her. And those two things battle each other in her chart. Like, wait, she has to, she, she almost has to like choose one or the other constantly. Maybe with that Uranus aspect that you um, just mentioned, that's so rare. Would that have connected Vanessa and Elle even more because it was both in both of their charts? Yes, 100%. Like it could be a trigger, but then also there's this level of understanding. And that's why I guarantee she chose you because you understand her. And that is it. That aspect is not easy to understand. And it means that like your relationship, while it separates, it, it's like super connected, you know? Because yeah, I was just saying both... like the fierceness of the bond that they yes. have. So it's, it's almost the opposite of adversity. Definitely, absolutely. It's not to negate the independence of who she is and her soul and everything that is uniquely hers. But I feel like we're one soul or one heartbeat, we're one soul. After seeing your charts, I completely see why you say that. Because I mean, she activated your life purpose, like on the day that she died. And even like the year before that, your chart was like being activated in like a really hard, obviously like karmic Plutonian death kind of way. You guys carry insane amounts of karma together. It's just like her life purpose ends up being part of your karma and vice versa. And it's, it really is when you said one soul, it, it's exact, it's 
super tied together astrologically yeah. speaking about the soul part of your chart and the karma involved in it have you ever had yeah. like have past life readings or what's that I, mean, I really want her to work with Michelle <laughs> like I, I would totally welcome a real opportunity to do that. Here's the thing about your chart specifically around loved ones and children is that you have your North Node and Neptune there. And so that means that those are two signifiers, both very strong and different of cycling through many lives with your loved ones. So like your romantic relationships and your children, wherever Neptune lives in the chart means that this is karmically spiritually connected. You guys are super tied together when it comes to past lives, as are the people that you've dated and married, you know, it's the same, the same house. Stevie, I was just going to go back to say for people who are listening that karma could be read in your chart. So can you just talk for a minute about like where you see that in that chart and where you saw it for for Vanessa and L. Yeah. So Saturn is Lord of Karma and Time. He's definitely the signifier of one of our things we're here to go to school for and like also where we're restricted and where we have responsibility. And he happens to live next to, so their Saturns are, are matched in their chart. So I put two charts on top of each other and they basically tell me like what planets are dancing and where and how, and th their Saturns are next to each other. So that means like this life is so, so, so karmically tied together and that you're also here to like go through hard situations together and like learn from each other and grow. And it, it's totally tied into like what you're here to do and what you're here to work through. Okay, so also this moon placement so that's like your emotional body and your inner needs it lives in this house of love and romance for l also creativity expressing yourself and it's in aquarius so it's super innovative and unique so we talked earlier about how she has like this i'm authentically who i am and it's like literally coming from the inside like this is who i am it means that you're incredibly open-minded when it comes to loving people you can invite all different walks of life to you and that you carry such understanding and non-judgment of them and also it means somebody who has like lightning bolts of creative genius like was she I mean I know you've talked a little, little bit about like her creative process but she's it's like the creative genius that's what I saw but it's like open and loving and big-hearted and she herself came out as a lesbian at 10 years old yeah you know and then in those next few years different people that she brought into her world from all over were all yeah. different types of people doesn't matter I mean I feel like Stevie in like these handful of sentences you have characterized her and she's a complex person so to be able to characterize her in a couple of sentences but yes the community she built for herself was the most diverse community of people and she just fully embraced it with no judgment and pushed us all to be better and is a creative genius. I mean, there's no, no two ways about it. And I see such like a humanitarian in her, in fact, too. Like she gets her expansion through community and through that, that like idea of how do I help humanity? I mean, even now today, like currently doing it, it's incredible. She is complex. She has <laughs> planets all over the chart, which makes, she has all the elements, earth, air, fire, water, you know, like, yes, she has like this really high, highly sensual aspect to her and she can feel everything and like, and understand like the darkness in the world too. She carries like a container for that, as do you, Vanessa, that both are necessary for us to grow. But she also has like creativity and she has this writer in here. I mean, she was she was here to write. Her One of her life purposes was to write, learn, <laughs> communicate, talk, read in the seeker's way. It's not like, oh, what's the weather like? And the birds are singing. It's like, what are we here to do? What does it mean? It's like this huge, it has really big picture questions. And it's also super curious. Like that was one of the biggest things she was here to do. And still to this day, right? Like that she's writing through you. It's crazy. And she has discipline around it too. Wanting facts and wanting information. And like, that's her Saturn, you know, like that's her karma. She's like, give me all the information. Like, what do I do with it? How do I write it? How do I organize it? So 100%, there's a, there's a really strong need to understand why we're here. What does it mean? And then there's this like strong need to emotionally express herself and her perspective of like, as she's experiencing things, how does she express herself even from the other side? I mean, she would say, she's like, I want to learn everything that there is to learn. Like just as a factual statement, I want to learn everything that could possibly be learned. And because I think in past life she taught. So yes, she's a teacher, 100% a teacher. Like that's part of her, her soul's purpose too, but she's done that before. 
she's always been curious, you know, but there's never, it's like never enough. That's exactly what her <laughs> chart says. It's like, I'm so disciplined for give me all of this, That's you know, awful. even if I'm in pain, give it to me. And I also see just a really energetic, physically energetic person that is like driven to start new things all the time. So it's not just curiosity. It's also like the, for the sake of starting just because it's exciting, you know, like I'm bored next. She was a big starter. But that's the thing that's so beautiful. I think is like so many people beat themselves up over not finishing. And I'm constantly telling my clients, like, stop it. You're just here for curiosity. You're just here to start. It's just for the energy of starting. And she has, Elle has so much drive to start. And I love Vanessa, how you, you just fostered that. Versus like, cause I think our society can shame it. She knew and she knows now things that require finishing, right? And those things she's relentless about. She absolutely has the earthiness to complete and, and maybe stubbornness perhaps sometimes where she's <laughs> not going to let, not going to give up. Her chart definitely has, carries like a strong, you can't change my mind kind of thing in it. Yep. And like, there's a level of needing repetition in what she's doing. So like might take her a moment to figure out what she's thinking. But then when she does, she's like, I'm staying here. You, you literally can't move me. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. She would always, she would call them her rants. She would get an idea in her head and she would just go over it and over it until she felt like she had fully, you know, made her point. And then, okay, I'm done now. This life was much more about the curiosity and the communicating and writing and reading and understanding like what, what, what is the big picture here and how do I fit into it? And how can I hold space for all the dark stuff? too the hard stuff because not everybody could do that she has one of those charts that like I feel like people would crumble yourself included Vanessa you have the same thing like you have this strength about you that and this depth that like not everybody could go through what you guys went through together and come out how you have with like still teaching and communicating these things to people it's incredible and she also has this beautiful neptune in her house of home and family which is this is the place of the mother which again signifies so you have it in the house of children and romantic relationships and she has it in the house of the mother so your chart says over and over and over again how much you guys have done this whole dance together many many times and that even if you were the mother in past lives like there's still always this like openness to teaching each other every time you talk Vanessa I, I'm so inspired by how you just let her be herself and when when you were talking and this is just for me being a mother too I am constantly giving my daughter permission to just be who she is I think growing up our generate a lot of our generations we weren't taught to feel our feelings and when you were speaking about how like we just need to leave and we're not going to go to that because I know that it's what's best for her and like you being so in tune with that and she so desperately needed it she was so empathetic and felt everything so so deeply and I'm like getting all the goosebumps like <laughs> she could have crumbled but you like you helped her thrive and that's why she chose you I'm sure I feel her here <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to her in the shower today. I was, hi, Elle. Like, I haven't talked to you before, but <laughs> come hang out with me. I just feel her. Like, I just, I don't think I've ever had this many goosebumps in a reading either. So it's really strong. Because that's always when I'm like, oh, that was true. Just can feel her smartness and her openness and like that she was way ahead of her time. She's the age of Aquarius, but like, not, we're not there yet. Yes. She is like the embodiment of it. Yes. Yes. She is the embodiment of it. Because the, it's so heart-centered and so focused on, on the collective and, and also the in, individual. Like that's what's so cool about her chart is that she's, yes, she has this Aquarius moon that's like all of humanity matters. And I expand myself through my community and like my openness to relationships, but also my creative expression matters in the collective. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think we sometimes get lost is like we need our own individual voices and she has that voice like and it's genius and it's smart and it's creative and it's expressive and fun and funny like this is also the house that's like the performer you know like the one on stage like I need to express myself and it's so it's like important from her insides it's like such truth to her but then in doing so then she also gets to help humanity by doing that and how important it is to like express yourself from an individual perspective this is her chart holy shit <laughs> It's just amazing how you just captured the the depth and the richness of who she is. And, you know, and when I hear these things, I mean, I'm proud of her every second of every day. I'm, just, I'm so freaking proud of her. Well, and even hearing, you know, Stevie capture all of this. And I think about the podcast that she put out. She was so speaking her truth. And I think that's the other part of her. This is who I am. And she was so blunt about it. And in those podcasts, 
the creativity and the things that she was thinking and talking about when she was in pain that most of us can never imagine. She was still doing it, right? She was still doing it and being that person. I can see her life and her soul's purpose so clearly being expressed. What's so beautiful about this, Stevie, too, I'm, I'm sure you can speak to it as you're looking at her chart. When you do readings for people, I'm sure there's so many that you see that it's like the chart is your human potential, right? It's like all of the things that you're, you want to do while you're here, what you're capable of doing while you're here. But so many of us don't get there right? Because we're afraid because, because of a million different reasons. And yet when you look at her, all of her aspects, it looks like she totally actualized everything, every aspect of her soul, of her, of her purpose while she was here, which is so amazing. Like seeing how you're like, you know, telling her whole story of all of her potential. It's like, yep. Yep. (laughs) She did. She did it all. Yeah. And that's like someone you get to tell somebody who's 60 or 50, right? like, Oh, you do all these things. And and, I mean, are you kidding? Like I've talked to 12 year olds. I've talked to 14 year olds, 16 year olds, and they're not anywhere in their potential. When you were saying that Karen, and I know you mentioned earlier, like her bucket list, one of the things in her bucket list was I want to be able to say I made it with all the truth in the world. And that's my dedication to her at the beginning of the book is, you know, 4L, you made it with all the truth in the world. And right. So that, I mean, and you just basically captured that in 15 years, you made it. And you're right. It's really about authentic truth to herself. She just embodies it in her chart. Do you want me to talk about like the day she passed? Mm -hmm. And I actually have one other question too, leading up to that. Does it show anything in terms of her health, of that being a challenge in her life? At the time, yes, 100%. Like you, do you mean in her natal chart or in the transiting chart? Like in the, at the, during the, the couple of years? That's a good question. I suppose either way. I don't see any, anything in her chart that would be like from a health perspective, like, wow, this person's going to struggle their whole life. But what she had during that time period in her chart was stacked multiple things that were hard. And that is what you're leading to talking about that. Yeah. Let's talk about her transition date then. So a couple of things she you know, urine, we talked about Uranus before, and that was like the true seeker, the freedom, the liberator. So, and this was also because it's next to the moon, which is the mother in the chart. There's like, there is a separation of these things. And that doesn't mean like it's always played out like that. It could sometimes mean that you live in different countries, you know, it just, it's just like a, a separation from. So Uranus actually moved into the eighth house of death in this exact time when she passed. And it would have made her more connected with the other side at that point. This is the time for death rebirth. And then she had Saturn, Lord of Karma, at the very bottom of her chart. And this is where, I mean, anytime a planet hits any of the access points in your chart, it's it's serious. It's very intense. So yes, Lord of Karma came to the bottom of her chart, which is like her most emotional sensitive place in her life. And Saturn is this planet of restriction. And he came to this very emotional part of her life where it would have signified that like, yes, she's so strong, but no more. Does that make sense? Having both of those aspects at the same time. And then she had Mars hit her South node at the same time, which is an ending. It's like the, of like this life, like check, almost like soul contract done. Does Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it really is like the activation point of that. And it would just being too, it's too hard. She had Pluto in the fourth house of home and family. So he is really hard there. That's again, like uh, the planet of transformation and and death and rebirth. And so he was in this place that was very emotional at the same time, meaning that home and family life for her during that period of time were also really hard. She had Chiron, which is our wound in the house of health. And this would have been a couple of years prior to this, like maybe three or four. And Neptune for two years in this house of, of health. When Neptune moves into the sixth house, it's where doctors cannot tell you what's going on, literally. Anytime I see up to the sixth house I'm like hey watch your stress because this is when you're gonna go to the doctor because your eyes bleeding and they're like I I don't know to tell you like that's it's literally what happens it's where our health sort of dissolves I I don't even like that's crazy and if you look at the onset of her illness which was April 21st of 2015 do you see that kind of start let me go to that I got it it's I mean I, I don't I don't even know what to say I know it's really, it was this, it was literally like all the things stacked at the same time. The validation of hearing that. So I'm looking at 2015. Yeah. Neptune was in there. 
He just popped in. Chiron was there. The South Node was there. And Neptune was there during that time. Like wounds show up, mystery illnesses come. And also it's tied into your karma, past life. I like mean, contract. mystery illnesses. I, like I can't <laughs> believe that's actually part of. Right. Part of her chart. Things cannot be explained when Neptune moves into the sixth house. It's just how it is. It also means that your daily routines for her would go out the window. Like anything that she, you know, was attached to when it came to her routines. Like it's really hard when that happens to say the least, but then she had all of the things she was in her Saturn opposition to when she was 14. That's a really hard year for people. Why One of the reasons why puberty for kids is so intense is because Saturn's activated during that time. So that's also where she would have issues with the family, have issues with herself, like where karma, it's just, it's just a really restricted, hard time in a kid's life. How much of a archetype coming into our lives? Like, are we really following that to the, to, to a T when we come in? Is are we really pre-planning all of this? Because I, when I hear the story of Ella, it just seems that she followed her astrological blueprint almost to the T. And I just wonder, like, how she did it, and why some of us don't. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So. I think astrology is the most beautiful mix between, I guess, like soul contract, because that's really what it tells me is like where the, it's like your north, south, east, west, like what direction are you supposed to be moving in? And what are you, what are you here to learn? Plus free will, because there's always free will. So whenever I do a reading, all of these archetypes are alive for people. And I like to describe when you have these, these planets knocking on your door in places, some people are really intuitive and they hear things or they feel things like, okay, I need to move in this direction or I need to do this for my life or I need to quit this job or whatever. You have these contracted times in the chart. The energy comes in no matter what you do. However, the loudness of it or the intensity of it is really your choice. So Pluto is going to come in no matter what, but if you're not hearing it, he's going to get louder and then he's going to start manifesting in the physical realm versus the psychological realm. It's up to you if you want to lean in or not or suffer more because they're going to do it anyway. So that's also why I feel like with 2020 and 2021, no matter what we do, this is coming. I think we've all like stepped into higher states of consciousness to understand like, okay, we're being asked to grow and stretch ourselves and hold space for each other and all these things. But yeah, astrology really that's the thing, like this stuff is coming and it's, we're ascending into higher states of consciousness, meaning like more coming from more heart versus more separation. And how we get there is totally on us. Like it could, we could suffer real hard or we could just like, okay, this is what's coming. Let's just accept it. What do we do? You know, and then let's move into that direction. So that's also why I'm feeling like a lot of peace right now. No matter what we do, we're moving through these energies. That's the same as the soul. It's like, I feel like the blueprint is there, but how you mean, or through it is totally on you. And it just sounds like for Elle, she set that all up in advance with Vanessa and then she remembered it. She connected with it in such a way that she was able to really fully live throughout this whole life experience where some of us may come down here and some of us, us may connect at certain points, but then we may avoid paying attention or not wanting to listen and, and making absolutely the opposite decision. Just well, and then, and then to add to that one observation and then one question, there are things though in the blueprint that you almost can't deny, right? Like her, the fact that she could feel so much that was just in there, right? Like you can't ignore that, but you can find your safety, which I think, you know, Vanessa was her safety or with the creative genius part and the, and the writing, like she couldn't deny it. I think the question that I have is, are you able to see that it, that's all jam packed in 15 years? You are not somebody. So for those listening, you're not going to say to someone, you're going to die on this date. That's not what you're, you know, you're going to do. So people should really be clear about that. But are you able to see that like so much of the life was, was packed in a certain amount of time? I'm curious about that. Yeah, that is a really good question. I don't, I don't really think so, honestly, because the thing is like Uranus can come into the eighth house and be like, okay, now separation from this body and this mother, or you could have an insane epiphany about how you have to change your life or someone else could pass away. I mean, or you could be liberated from an old trauma that you carried as a child. So the planets really signify multiple things as do the houses. And so it just gives me an idea. 
and there's like themes around it, but you definitely can't tell timing. I can tell if someone has, is going to have a hard karmic life, like Vanessa. Vanessa is like not a sleepy soul. She's just like Elle, where it's like, I'm, what am I going to do with this information? How am I going to grow from this and continue thriving? And that is really Elle in a nutshell, you know, like no matter, she's just so strong that she's just still going to thrive and speak her truth. But, and the same thing for you, Vanessa, like why I really think in seeing these aspects, because she has lots of gifts in her chart too, that this is an old soul. You can oftentimes in the chart, you'll see things and then they'll, they'll see multiple and you'll be like, okay, well, there's a huge theme here. So this must be something going on, you know, like in the love life, in the home life, you can, you can see themes going on and there's multiple charts to look at to kind of piece it all together, like a puzzle. And if astrologer ever tells you something with certainties, no, I hope people really hear that. Yeah. Does your astrological chart stop when you cross over or does it continue? That's a really good question. Yeah. yeah especially because like Vanessa was saying, the relationship is current. Like, right. And, right. you know, just from like the spiritual work we've all gone through is we realize like this, your personality traits even stay with you as a soul. Like you don't completely change, you know, exactly. like aspects of you still totally. stay. Like her personality is so completely intact. I would think that your soul and the personalities inside of you would definitely continue. But the contract in this life, because this chart is done on the earth. So mm -hmm. on the actual physical earth plane is how we mathematically calculate it. So I guess that would mean that like for Vanessa, I could see it in her, like I could see Elle showing up in her chart. That's actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially because of how Elle's chart was activated when she passed. It was like a contract. I, I'm, I'm now the teacher and I did all the things. And like, I mean, she did an extraordinary amount in the amount of time she, I, I just, I cannot get over it. I think that is why so many people uh, just even from our Seeking with Robin world, whether they're watching on YouTube or listening as a podcast, maybe they come into contact with the book. They want to hear more from you, Vanessa. She's even bringing this conversation to all of us today with Stevie, yeah. right? To talk about astrology in a way that we haven't talked about it, at least on here before, you know? And I don't know that Stevie, you've ever, if you've done people who passed away before, if we look at Vanessa's chart, and I would love to hear what Vanessa's chart looked like when Al physically passed. The way that Vanessa said that they're like one soul is that they get to communicate and like live this contract. Like you get to be the body in this meat suit and get to still fulfill. And her contract for this physical lifetime on this earth in present day, check, that's done. But our contract is still active. Yeah, it's absolutely. And will probably continue. So when I look at your chart, and this would be July 22nd, 2018, correct? Yeah. So Saturn is hitting your North node. And that means that karmic activation of this soul happens. Life purpose, like what you want to move towards in this life. And also it's hard. It feels really icky. It's a huge dose of pessimism. Like it's heavy. And then he moved into this sixth house to join Pluto, which is like the house of daily life, routines, health, even for you, like stress. And even the year and a half or so following that, like just really hardness there, like complete transformation around like what your daily life used to look like. And also major stress with your health and just like heavy weight, like such heavy weight. Does that feel, I mean, obviously that's. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You had Uranus hitting your Mars, which was interesting because Mars hit her South node on that day. And Uranus moved into this place of passing and you had major change on your, your own security. So one in one way, it was like liberation, probably because she was no longer in pain, but mm -hmm. also like detachment from major life change, like your world being shooken up. And then also your daily life and routines completely being like super heavy like super hard and you know this was going on before she passed even but this is like this is the day of and, th and that's what I was going to ask like if that if all of that was present in the months or even years prior absolutely and you had Saturn in the house of children like the whole time she was sick and your life of fun and leisure is like gone <laughs> when Saturn's there he's like n no one can have fun like it's just so not what does that mean like Saturn being in the house of children what is what does that mean it would mean like way more responsibility around your kids like when he whenever he hits the fourth and fifth houses it's either you take on loads of responsibility for your parents or like someone in your family or your house you know and then when he hits the fifth house it would be 
the romantic life and the house of children. So this is where we carry, we have to carry a big, heavy responsibility. And he would have been there for the last, the two years prior to that in home and family and in this house of children. So, I mean, even four years up to that time, it was like heavy at the bottom. Yeah, that feels very consistent. You also had Neptune in your eighth house of death, not unexpected, but like the dissolving of, and also great transformation in sometimes a really confusing way, which I imagine would have been Mm -hmm. trying to make sense of it all would have been really hard. It was, I mean, a very, very heavy time. You were also, as she was in her Saturn opposition during that year, you were too. Could because your Saturns were the same, very, very close together. So anytime her Saturn was activated, so was yours. That also would signify your past life contract because that's where your South Node lives and what your future would look like. Also activating those things. Yep, yeah, like letting go of stuff from past lives even. Like oh, maybe it was karma with her or the pain of that she experienced or, you know, there was like an, an ending there. Like literally when she was passing is when your North Node was being activated, which is literally like igniting your life purpose. Like I remember you saying in the last videos, like I never thought I was going to be a writer or this wasn't, you know, this is where Saturn's like, okay, this is what we're doing something different. We're having a new dream now. And so he was activating you there. Elle had this like self-expression Mm -hmm. and the creativeness and you have that very much too but yours is sort of unfamiliar it's not as like (laughs) this is who I am you know um and it lives your life purpose lives in the same house as where her heart lived where her her Mm -hmm. like this is who I am was and so she was the teacher of that for you so that you can stand in your authentic truth and be this creative and express yourself because there is such a strong desire to express yourself from a very, very spiritual place. And all of that was going, was being activated in a really hard karmic way in your chart during that period of time. That totally makes sense. Just by nature, right? Like I'm a relatively reserved person. I keep a low profile. I have no social media present. Like I'm, I'm not. And I used to like joke with everyone in my family that I don't have a creative bone in my body. Like there's a handful of things I do well, but creativity was never on that list has forced me to, in my quest to tell her story, she's forced me to activate that stuff in me. Which was already in in your chart. Well, and that's the thing about your chart. In past lives, it was always about like just being a number in the collective. And like you, you are humanitarian. You know what humanity needs. Like it's, it's clear that you're also an old soul in this way and that you've, you've helped the collective before, but the way that Elle so easily just expressed herself is your life purpose. And yours happens to be like a hardworking teacher in the lens of that. It's about me in my process and shining my life out into the world the way that she did and of course it's like the the story of both so fascinating to me to see both of your charts it's like you're standing together playing off of each other versus like staring at each other i don't know if that makes any sense but (laughs) it makes total sense sense. okay (laughs) it really is such a crazy level of understanding with your charts together and also that like who she truly was is what you're here to do then from that lens you're the teacher now you're the one that gets to express yourself and like inspire people yeah I mean like that it just is validating for me that you know we we do have these interwoven souls because that's how I feel every day and you know when when you carry a, a son in the fourth house there's a bit of introversion there because you're very sensitive and so it's it's hard sometimes to when you feel so many things like you, your chart tells me that you do, it's hard to then put yourself out there, but you're actually here to learn and grow into that as much as possible. Get on stage, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, and that's what you're doing and like showcasing to so many people how you can live and thrive, have a relationship with somebody on the other side. And it's so, it's so grounded. You carry this like earthy quality about you. It's probably why you can remember numbers and have like this <laughs> intelligence in it. You know, it's very grounded. It's like, okay, but we're here to do something with this. It's not just like, let's talk about it. It's much more grounded. I mean, you have a Capricornian North node. That means like you're here to climb the mountain and, mm-hmm. you know, on the earth. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's, it's so interesting and it's come up like throughout this Stevie, as you talk about her being so committed to her truth and, you know, the way that she and I are kind of woven together. And I mean, that was one of my huge learnings from the book. And and this understanding that she and I have for each other. And I've had, and Robin, you've been present for some of these conversations. I've had conversations with people. I've had people like pull me, pull over when I'm out walking. And they tell me is that one of the things that really stood out for them from the book was how clearly I saw Elle, really saw her and honored who she was and how it's forced them to have some really hard conversations with themselves around like, 
am I seeing my kids for who they are? And some pain around perhaps not having done that, but also a real shift for them around like, wow, I've got time, right? It's not too late. I can I can start to see my child for who they are. And that's beautiful. And I love it. And it's not necessarily what I would have expected people to take from the book. It's a part of our story for sure. But I guess I it's a more subtle part of the book. You know, maybe I naively thought that people would wouldn't necessarily pick up on that as much, and that I've been, you know, pulled, you know, pulled over and had these conversations where people are like, "I need to tell you how much your story made me really stop and pause and see my children for who they are." It's just extraordinary that that Elle's story is allowing people to do that and hopefully creating a different kind of bond between parents and children and giving these children, you know, more space to be who they are. And I mean, just to validate that when I was listening to the YouTube videos, it's what popped out the most at me. And maybe it's because I'm a mom, but like you ooze that. You have a Leo rising, Vanessa. This is someone who shines without even trying to shine. Like people will see you no matter what you do, no matter how introverted you are. (laughs) It's just like you're here to shine your light out into the world. And I feel like that this North Node in the fifth house of children, you know, it's like, yes, it's individual creative expression, but it's also, it holds such space for children and like who they are authentically, which again is like what Elle was. That was like what hit me the most. Cause it's my quest here too. I'm always like trying to tell my daughter, like, feel your feeling. And you just do it so easily. It's like this beautiful gift. Thank you. Vanessa, you weren't even thinking about, it was like, you just assumed everybody looked at their children that way. You just knew innately from the beginning to protect her and let her be her. And you were going to do whatever it took so that she could be her best L. You had the fierceness and L had the fierceness. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're all, you're here to show us and then give permission to so many parents out there to really look at things differently and be brave for your child. You know? And I think that's a huge, I think it's a huge piece of what Elle is here to teach and what her soul's purpose is because it was so critically important to her. Yes. In terms of me and Elle, I feel like everything you've said is just spot on in terms of the, you know, the intersection of our souls. That fills my entire heart. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was just an honor for me, really. I know I said that earlier, but it, it was so fun for me too. And I'm going to continue to talk to Elle now all the time. <laughs> I can't wait to see what signs you get. Mm-hmm. I'm really like, you're going to start to see the signs too. And that also leads me to thank everybody that has sent in the signs that they received from, from the last time that we spoke with Vanessa and Elle came through Lisa and said, I'm going to show you use me and you're going to see rainbows and you're going to see ravens and you're going to see dimes. Use me. And we really received an overwhelming amount of signs from people. Really the stories of confirmation and validation that Elle has given people who weren't sure what to believe. She's already, look at all the things that we talked about and how she's impacted so many people She's really helping them now believe in that less visible world and in the afterlife and that in what we've talked about throughout this conversation, which is that you can have a current relationship and, and it can be an ask and response type of a relationship. Vanessa asks Elle a question and somewhere in the not so distant future, could be an hour, could be a minute, you get that response, whether it's through a song for you. That was the other thing. People sent in the songs. They And they knew that it was coming at a divinely timed place. Mm -hmm. They weren't looking for it. It came out of the blue and then they felt so validated. So for you, it could be a song. It could be a license plate. It could be a rainbow. I've never seen more incredible rainbows, both from other people and from Vanessa that she sends me on, (laughs) on a weekly basis. She's just trying to help everybody. And I love that people have asked for her to come into their world. Like, and I, I, Robin, I know you and I've talked about this and it, it really, I don't really know how to describe it. Like, you know, she's my daughter. And so of course I can't get enough of her. Right. But for other people who didn't know her in life mm-hmm. to actively invite her into, you know, their world and to feel this emotional connection to her for others to, to make that space for her. It, it just, that just blows me away. Well, that to me is the teacher in her, right? And everything that you validated today, Stevie, about who she is as a soul and what she came to do in this lifetime, all those things have led her now to be even this like this teacher from the other side. 
Stevie, I love that, that you feel her and talk to her. And I love that that's going to continue. She like called you out. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, Stevie, she called you out. Stevie, is there anything else that you want to say to anyone about, I know you actually, were, you integrated what's going on with our world right now, but is there anything that any of us should be looking at as we go into 2021? I think that 2021 is not nearly as intense as 2020. 2020 was the, is the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. And so we're grieving our past. I kind of feel like the theme of 2021 is like us holding on to our fears because they feel safe or holding on to the old stuff, but then realizing like being shooken up so much by Uranus that we realize that this is not going to liberate us. This is not the new, this does not work. And like the push pull between the old, like the old ways of being in the old structures and then the new liberating where we take care of each other and we stop dividing ourselves and all of these things. So I just keep telling people to like live in your heart, connect in your heart, like do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, to live from here versus like this conditioned mind that we have. And no matter what happens, we're moving into this beautiful new air cycle of time where we start to devalue materialism and value ideas and innovation. It's coming no matter what. I love <laughs> we can, that. We can suffer or we can just embrace it. <laughs> The nodes right now are in Gemini Sagittarius, which means like we have to let go of dogmatic ways of believing. And like, I'm right because I had this experience. It's like, well, that's great. You had that experience, but that other person over there was born into that body with a totally different experience. So let's like talk to each other and listen. And then from that place, stay curious. Like, and that's really the advice is like, stay curious with even like how you're feeling day to day, because it's like a roller coaster ride. Astrologically, we've been in it, you know, we are in the cooker and we've had to be curious within ourselves because how else do you survive? You can't attach to every feeling that you're going through. So it's exactly astrologically speaking, what we are being asked to do is stay curious and listen and find commonality through the curiosity. Oh, I hope everybody hears that. I really think that's the way we move forward and love wins, right? Like no yes. matter what love wins, love for yourself, love for others, love wins over fear. It may take time, yeah. but, it, but it does. Thank you. Thank you guys so love much. Love you guys. Love well, you I too. love you. Bye. Bye. If you want to find out more or look into a reading with Stevie Kalista, please visit farmhousemoon.com. And you can follow Stevie on Instagram at, at farmhousemoon. Ravens and Rainbows is now available in print. You can find out more about it at ravensandrainbows.com or on Amazon. Hey!